in a few minutes, we shall look at the glory. The glory. Second Corinthians chapter Chronicles chapter five verse thirteen and fourteen. And it came to pass. As the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I hope there's not too much echo here tonight. And the sound, hearing some reverb. Our objective tonight is to understand the glory and the way into the glory. Two things I want to say very quickly, and I don't intend to preach too long because we are here basically for worship. The end time revival, the first thing to understand tonight is that the end time revival is a revival of God's glory in the earth. It is a revival where the earth will be literally irrigated and flooded with the glory of the Lord like the waters cover the seas. In Hebrews, sorry, Numbers chapter 14 verse 21, it says, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. He said, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That includes my degree that they just showed us now where the people are seated right in the northeast. And that glory is right there with them. Right in the sanctuary, right on the gallery and the overflows there. That Asia will be filled. Russia will be filled. Germany will be filled. Indonesia will be filled. Saudi Arabia will be filled. United Arab Emirates will be filled. Filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That is, the end time revival is nothing but a revival of glory explosion. Number two, the end time church is designed to be raptured in a blaze of glory. Raptured in a blaze of glory. By the time the rapture is taking place, the church would have been a glory-filled, glory-stamped, glory-wrapped, glory-filled, glory-stamped, glory-wrapped church. A blaze of glory. For he said, 
in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 that he's coming for a glorious church that he might present to himself a glorious church not having spots or wrinkle or any such thing so Jesus is coming for a glorious church so the church is a church of glory is God speaking to someone here say a loud amen if you are the one God was speaking to, shout the loudest, amen. Now, knowing fully well that worship is a major doorway to the glory. Hear me now. That's what con connects us now. Knowing that worship, as the priest worship, the glory landed. The meaning of that is the end time revival is going to be an explosion of deep concentrated worship. The, the, the signature of the end time is a signature of deep worship. Glory provoking worship. The meaning of that is the end time church that will be a glorious church is a worshiping church. The time will come when the only thing will come and do in church is just the worship of the king. Listen. If you don't understand the language of worship, you may be lost in this end time. If you don't, if you don't have the heart of worship, you may be a misfit in the revival that is hitting right now. Now I can assure you we are not looking for a revival. We are right in the middle. It's only going to escalate. When you, had, when you hear the kind of testimonies you just heard, then you know that we are in the midst of something that is only about to escalate. Very quickly before I drop the microphone and we continue in worship. What is the content of the glory. When we came in here tonight and we are trusting God for the release of the glory and we say that the end time church is a glorious church and we say that, that the church, the, that, that the, the end time revival is a glorious revival, what is the content of the glory? Number one, the glory is the manifestation of the person of God. The person. Is the, manifest, the anointing is the manifestation of the presence of God, but the glory is the manifestation of the person of God. Is the manifestation of is is it is the manifestation of the godness of God, the person of God, the nature of God, the character of God, the essence of God, where God shows who He is. Number two, the, the glory is the manifestation of the weightiness, weightiness, heaviness, almightiness of God. The, the glory is the Hebrew word kabod, the Greek word doxa, all of them means weight. Heaviness, weightiness, agitigba God, the agitigbaciousness of God. Is God speaking to someone here at all? Number three, the blessing, or sorry, the, the glory is the manifestation of the supernatural capability of God. The supernatural capability of God. This beginning of miracles. Did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory? The glory is the fuel for the unusual, is the fuel for the supernatural, is the fuel for the miraculous, the manifestation of the supernatural capability of God. Fourthly, the glory is the manifestation of the creative dimensions of God. The creative dimensions of God. When 
wherever the glory manifests, creation happens. Creation happens. Creation happens. How is that so? You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. I want you to know that there was light before there was the sun. There was light before there was the moon. There was light before there was the stars. So the light that appeared at creation was not sunlight. It was not moonlight. It was not starlight. It was glory light. It was inside that glory that creation happened. How do I know? One angel appeared on the earth in Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. And the Bible said the earth was lighted with the glory of an angel. And after these things, I saw another angel came down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. If the earth can receive light from an angel, how much more Jehovah lighted as he stepped on the earth that was without form and void and darkness, light arrived. Inside that light, creation happened. It was out of that light that sunlight came, that moonlight came, that starlight came, that the vegetation came, that the fishes came. That man came. I am here to announce to somebody, you are about to see some creative miracles that will shock your life. You are about to see some creative miracles that will shock your life. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Let that amen be louder yet. Somebody lift your right hand and scream glory seven times. Again. Again. Four. Five. Six. And seven. I want us to get, this generation should just get ready to see things. We have, we have seen nothing yet. While that man from Makodi was testifying of how God interrupted his journey, premature death journey, the past, our pastor from local, the regional pastor here, he said he sent me a testimony, haven't I seen it? I said, I haven't seen it. He said, one of our members in the local that church had a dream, a, a, a dream in the night where she, she or he, he died and was headed for hell. And suddenly he saw this pastor step in. I said, where are you going? Stop there. Get back. He returned back literally from the dead. That is a kind of thing where people sleep. And didn't wake up in the morning. Listen. The very next day, the devil was not tired. This person was involved in an accident. And six people died on the spot. And stepped out and scratched. The previous night, that the death was interrupted already. And the death tried to manifest in the daytime. And that death could not manifest. I'd like you to get ready. We are about to, be, we are about to see some stranger order of manifestation. Some creative dimensions of things. If you are here, shout the loudest amen. We are at the Yola Crusade when the lady came with, young girl came with leg that is crooked. And shorter by much shorter than the other. And the woman was screaming. I the mother was screaming. I watched my daughter's leg grow out. I watched the leg grow out. I watched the leg grow out. And the usher came, I saw it growing out. Right in front of their eyes. 
How was she walking before? One leg longer than the other. How is she walking now? That's how they are. That's what she's saying. I'm not hearing the volume. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? I announce to your life right now, any area of your life where creation is needed, creation is happening right now. Creation is happening right now. It is happening right now. Shout the loudest, amen. See a lot of people celebrating their testimony. Give the Lord a bigger clap of hand and take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The glory is the manifestation of the person of God. Is the manifestation of the almightiness, the weightiness of God. Is the manifestation of the supernatural capability of God. Is the manifestation of the creative dimensions of God. Number four, five. The glory is the manifestation of the wealth and abundance of God. Wealth. If it is going to be a glorious church, then the church is going to see the abundance. The world will see the abundance of God out of the church like they have never seen before. All those who are angry at the wealth of the church and members of the church, they should get ready because they have seen nothing yet. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches that is inside his glory. According to his riches that is inside inside his glory am i communicating shout power in time to come when meetings like this will hold the abuja airport to be jammed with aircrafts just airport to be jammed mina airport to be jammed people flew down with their own aircrafts am i speaking to somebody here at all just like you buy bicycle, just like you buy motorcycle. is God, anybody who is angry at the influence of the church, they better die now because we have seen nothing yet. 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 Seen nothing yet. Somebody shout power. He showed me clear signs from December last year. Clear signs of what is about to happen with the church. Uh, where the pastor said, we're about to um, take an offering for the building of a sanctuary like this. And one member tells the pastor, please don't announce it. God has spoken to me to take care of it. Just one person, just one person. Don't announce it. Don't talk about it, sir. It's enough. It's enough. Don't, don't, don't worry. God already spoke about it. It's going to be because the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. He said, cry yet, saying, your city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Somebody shout glory. In Haggai chapter 2 and in verse 6, you read that before, please take your seat. In Haggai chapter 2 and in verse 6, he said, For yet once, for thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, I will shake the earth, I will shake the sea, I will shake the dry land. I will shake the nations. I will shake Canada. I will shake America. I will shake Australia. I will shake Japan. And the desire of nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory. Say the Lord of hosts. And what is that glory about? The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. Ay, 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 ay. Say the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Somebody shout glory. God will give us enough resources. 
that we will use to persecute the devil. Did you hear what I just said? That we will use to persecute the devil. We will use to chase the devil back to hell. We will use to demystify terrorism. And use to demystify the agenda of darkness. You believe that? Shout the Lord and amen. I am one of those who is very, very careful talking about money so that people don't say this is one of those preaching because of money. Because but once I get the, once I see it in scripture, to hell with the devil. To hell with the devil. To hell with the devil. Listen to me. We are going to combine integrity and prosperity. And we are, we are going to combine integrity, purity, and prosperity. We are going to combine holiness and abundance. We are going to combine. We are going to be. We are the generation of the kingly priests and the priestly kings in this generation. It's not, it's not coming for a wretched church. It's not coming for a pauper church. It's not coming for a beggarly church. It's not coming for a pitiable church. It's coming for a church that the world will know that their father owns the earth. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And so it is the manifestation. Because when you talk glory, people are only thinking power, thinking miracles. Glory is the manifestation of the wealth and the abundance of God. Number five, number six, it is the manifestation of the dignity and honor of God. Dignity and honor. A glorious church is an honorable church. It's a dignified church. The manifestation of the glory of God is the manifestation of the honor of God. Is the manifestation of, of the regard and respect of God. Glory is the opposite of shame. The manifestation of the glory of God. The Bible says in Proverbs, I believe it was chapter 3 and verse 35, that shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. As wisdom is opposite foolishness, glory is opposite shame. So where the glory is, you can't have shame. What you have is honor. What you have is dignity. What you have is respect. We shall come to a point where the world shall so respect us because of our results and our impact. And they will follow us to know our God. There is power evangelism. There is preaching evangelism. You know power evangelism? Miracle signs and wonders. Preaching evangelism, you preach like Billy Graham and give the another call. There is presence evangelism where you carry an anointing, you didn't say anything. And they say your life is convicting me of sin. There is influence evangelism where your influence is so massive they say, if this is what it means to serve God, I want to follow you to church. I want to follow you to church. I want to follow you to know your God. That is what shall happen to somebody here. That is what is happening to so many people here. Now, I want your mind to expand. Because what your mind cannot contain, your hand cannot carry. God will never put in your hands what is too big for your mind to comprehend. Is God speaking to anybody here? I want you to expand your mind. I want you to think large, think wide, and think massive. Think massive, think wide, think large, think massive. Think, think, think mega. Be delivered from plastic mentality and shift to elastic mentality. The mentality of anything can happen anytime. Anything is possible anytime. Is there anybody with such a mentality here? Shout the loudest, amen. <laughs> Number seven, the glory is the manifestation of the light or what I call the luminousness of God. The light, the luminousness of God. He said, arise, shine. For thy light is come. 
and the glory is risen upon you. Where the glory is, light is. Now listen to what I'm about to say. We are going to, God is going to open up to insight that people haven't sighted before. In the season we are in, we will open Bible passages and somebody will say, is that, was that in the Bible? Listen to this. Light, insight, revelation. We are going to step into some very, very dangerous, drastic realms in the prophetic. That will swallow up the fake and occultic prophetic. I'm telling you what I have seen. Very, very drastic, terrific dimensions of seeing, hearing, knowing, declaring, razor sharp accuracy by virtue of the glory that is, is, is exploding that will shame the people of the world and shame the native doctors. That Daniel order that made them to make him the president of all seers, including occultic seers. Did you see that? That Daniel was the head of the astrologers and the magicians of Babylon. That is all these people can see, you see more than them. All these people can hear, you hear more than them. All these people speak, it happens. You speak and it happens more than them. So you are, even though you are not a native doctor, you are their chairman. Somebody shout glory. Say it louder. Glory. At the top of your voice. Glory. The reason why you need to hear this is because before God does things, he says them. First of all, he shows them, then says them, then does them. That's the chain. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That is why you need, you need to hear the possibilities that are around our corner. What is about to happen, even immediately. And it's being launched from this night. The theme of tonight is called glory. Somebody shout glory seven times. Again, 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 and again. That glory shall hit your life, shall hit your family, shall hit your marriage. Take your seat and just take the seventh, the final point, number eight. The glory of God is the manifestation of the holiness of God. The manifestation of the cleanliness of God. The purity of God. We read it already in 2 Chronicles 5, 13, all the way to verse 14. The priests were wearing pure white apparels. That was their garment. In the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 11, who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? Who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. His glory explodes in the climate of holiness. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you need this glory I'm talking about, there are many things to do, but I'll tell you three things. One, and I close there. Embrace authentic worship lifestyle. And I'm not talking about whether they are, you have the ability to sing or not. Authentic worship lifestyle. Let your lifestyle be the lifestyle of worship. Because the worship is the magnet of the glory. 
embrace authentic worship lifestyle. Number two, embrace genuine holiness. Not just what will take you to heaven, but what will make you see God at work on it. Holiness. We saw it already. Exodus 15, 11. Glorious the holiness. While I was mentioning this, the word the Holy Ghost said to me is, clean house. This is time for us to clean house. Lifestyle thing. Too much time on that television. Too much time on that iPhone looking at things that you are not meant to. Clean house. There are friends that you might need to release out of your life. Because your association with them is at the expense of glory. Am I communicating at all? There may be a, a premises you, you pack out from. Because remaining there means being devoid of glory. You see, many of us, there are people God wanted to separate you from. He has tried his best to bring wild wind between the two of you, but you are forcing yourself on them. I'm talking to somebody. Clean house. Clean your house. And number three. Embrace debt to self. God is not looking for who to share his glory with. All the glory must be to the Lord. No man on earth must give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Embrace death to self. The hour has come that the Son of Man must be glorified. John chapter 12, verse 23. But except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and dies, he can't see that glory. The hour has come that the Son of Man must be glorified. This is not the time to raise shoulder and say, See how powerful I am. This is not the time to allow people to clap you into irrelevance. This is not the time to allow anybody to tell you how big you are. This is the time to redirect all glory to God no matter what you see. Somebody said one day that somebody died. And they took our daily devotion as seed of destiny. I think they opened the page that has the miracle or something. And hit the person three times or four times. And the person came back to life. And I told myself, I said, I cannot glory in this. And the person cannot glory in it. Because the person did not write the book. And I did not meet the dead. Maybe if I met the dead in person and I prayed, he may not have risen. But God decided that let him, let me do it this way. And the dead came back to life. Neither by my power nor by the power of somebody who used the mantle to do you understand. We must come to the point where we find every reason to redirect the glory to God. Every reason. Eh? Find the reason. The man that said he was raised from the dead in Macorina, I'm not aware. I am not aware. I wasn't there. I was preaching. He said he saw me with the microphone in the, in, in the realm of the dead. Only God could have moved like that. That no matter what happens, you redirect that glory. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are. Father, thank you for tonight. We give you the praise and give you the honor for your faithfulness and your mercies. Thank you for your glory that is about to be released upon our life tonight. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. 
We magnify your holy precious name. In the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ the resurrected Lord. Thank you master. In Jesus precious name. Please be seated where you are. We can bow our heads very very quickly. This vast crowd inside overflows overflowing everywhere around the world. You are saying pastor you just preached to me. I want that glory explosion in my life. I want a change of story. But my life is not right with God. Obviously, we will not be able to come out because there is nowhere to take the people to. The place where we normally take them to is jammed with people that block the road right there and everywhere. But I'm going to pray for you where you are. And you are going to say to me, Pastor, I want to be a part of this glory. I don't want to miss out on this glory. I want to be a part of this glory explosion. I want to be a part of it. But in my life, I know I've offended God in many ways. I need mercy. I need forgiveness for my sins. I need mercy. I need forgiveness for my sins. I need mercy. I need forgiveness for my sins. Anywhere you are, pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Let me hear you. Lord Jesus. That is for those surrendering their lives to Jesus and receiving forgiveness for their sins. Say, I am a sinner. I need you in my life. Louder. Come into my life, Jesus. Make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you. No turning back. 